Oh, hi everybody. Hey, um, look, if you're thinking of uh, eating a steak or a chop or a hamburger tonight, then you are very, very naughty. Uh, there's been a new speech out showing just how naughty you are. Let's check it out. So the Oxford Union, they are one of the, the debating societies. Uh, as you know, I've done a bit of debating when I was at school. I shared that a couple of episodes ago. Uh, and the Oxford Union, they do these debates. And they had one recently entitled, Should Society Finally Move Beyond Meat? Yeah, terrible topic, even thinking about it, isn't it? I mean, you'll always find me near the barbecue at parties. But one of the guest speakers was Carol Adams, and she is the author of this book, the Sexual Politics of Meat, a Feminist Vegetarian Critical Theory. And uh, she was actually inducted into the Animal Rights Hall of Fame 2011. She has a Masters of Divinity from Yale, Yale University, and she's a writer, vegan feminist, writer, vegan feminist, and animal rights activist, as you can imagine. And of course, she was speaking, uh, the moot should society finally move beyond meat. She was very much in the affirmative. Uh, it was classic critical theory. Now, just to remind you, critical theory, according to critical race theory, all whites are oppressors, right? And all minorities are oppressed. And there's this intersectionality. And depending on your uh, race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, uh, gender identity or disability, then, or even a combination of those, and that's termed as intersectionality, the more of those boxes you tick, the better, the more you are a victim. And to the whole list of victims now, we can add animals. Uh, it is critical theory at its very best, or at its funniest. Uh, so here's a couple of excerpts from the speech. Uh, so this is critical theory meets uh, meat. And uh, the first bit is, how many negative labels can you hear in this little excerpt? I believe we should move beyond all meat. So, what we choose to eat has consequences far beyond the circumference of our plates. Specifically, your vote tonight expresses your allegiance to or rejection of a white supremacist patriarchal worldview. Ooh. Do we vote to further inequality and sustain world-destroying violence? In the sexual politics of meat, I introduced the concept of animals as absent reference. In order to be eaten, animals must disappear as living beings, that is, be killed. They then disappear conceptually, as so many forms in which we eat animals' corpses are massaged by euphemistic language, hamburger, steak, pork, bacon, etc. Even the speaker just before me talked about turkeys. He's talking about dead butchered turkeys of whom part of their bodies will be eaten. Meat eaters order leg of lamb, not a baby lamb's leg. The animals cannot possess their own body parts. Uh, yeah, okay, so we've got uh, white supremacists, patriarchal, inequality, violence, and sexual politics of meat. Uh, but she hasn't stopped there. Let's add uh, climate change and misogyny. If you eat animals, you take up more climate space, requiring more water, more land, more forest deforestation, contributing more greenhouse gases. This is felt disproportionately by countries in the global south. Their carbon footprint is smaller, but they experience more frequent and intense climate change caused weather events. These events especially affect girls and young women. Your hamburger comes with a dose of misogyny. Uh, uh, yeah, apparently your hamburger comes with a dose of misogyny, but it doesn't stop there. Apparently, I enjoy my steak because of weak masculinity and racism. The notion that the best protein comes from corpses is a racist belief as it erases and replaces indigenous African, Asian, Mesoamerican cultural food practices. Meat eating is also one of the ways gender-based structures of oppression are perpetuated. Men in the West are taunted to renew their man card by eating meat because that's what real men do. That's the sexual politics of meat and it reveals how unsettled masculinity really is. Okay, I hope you're feeling really bad if you like standing at the barbecue now. 
but it doesn't stop there because look, if you're talking about critical theory and intersectionality, you've got to bring in gender ideology somewhere. Masculinity, a construct of the gender binary facing constant destabilization, feels always under threat, and eating animals is its protection racket. Okay, so uh, look, we've brought in quite a few negative labels here, but we need to bring in, uh, apparently it's all about being wounded masculinity. And apparently 9-11 was an example of that. How she connects 9-11 and eating meat, well, have a listen. That's why after 9-11, a focus on men as heroes and on meat eating became part of the reclamation of a wounded masculinity. When a black man was elected as U.S. president, we saw how white this wounded masculinity was. White supremacists weapon, weaponized it, eating meat, eggs, and dairy. Images of milk-drinking white men, of platters groaning with meat, and the baiting of liberal men as so-called soy boys are all part of the neo-Nazi <laughs> messaging. <laughs> well, uh, obviously the audience thought that was very funny. I haven't actually heard of that term soy boy, but apparently I checked it out and online, even in New Zealand, yes, you can access uh, happy, happy soy boy milk, which apparently makes a great froth for a latte. So there we go. Uh, but anyway, let's continue this theme of neo-Nazis, shall we? This is their right, the neo-Nazis say. This is their identity. The new colonization rests on the unstable foundation of white men's insecurities. Look at the way people, um, men, in the animal industry speak of female animals as willing and ready to be made forcibly pre pregnant. Which female animals are powerless to resist? There'd be no meat eating without the constant forced reproduction by female animals. Yet popular culture is flooded with references to sexy cows, sexy pigs, sexy chickens, sexy fishes who all just want to have fun. They want to be pregnant and they want to be killed because this feminized sexuality wants to be eaten. The only desire animals are credited with possessing is the desire to be consumed which strangely can only be expressed after their death. Now, you're probably thinking, man, can she add any more negative labels? Are there any more negative groups that she can bring into people who may like meat? Uh, oh, have a listen to this bit. Do you care about animals is considered a sign of weakness in a world still committed to the gender binary that values stereotyped masculine reason over stereotyped feminine feeling and wants order. And yet the reasons we hear are so irrational. If I did not eat animals, they never would be born. Meat eaters like anti-abortionists have forgotten that one quality of non-existence is not having awareness about existence. Yeah, there you have it. Meat eaters like anti-abortionists. See, apparently if you're pro-life, then you are a meat eater. Um, well, go figure. That's the first time that I've heard that. Now, uh, just finally, uh, and just before I enjoy my hamburger, um, did you laugh? Because there is a reason that you laughed at some of this speech, as well as the audience at the Oxford Union debate. Uh, this is the reason you laughed. I've heard all your laughter. I know some of these must be new ideas, or you think they're fringe or whatever. Our whiteness is part of the problem of meat eating. <laughs> Yep, apparently it all comes down to our whiteness. Now, I must remind my colleague Nick Tuatasi next time I take him out for a feed, because generally he'll choose a steak or a hamburger, and I will remind him that it is his whiteness that he has chosen that burger. But this is the problem with critical theory. Uh, it, it's confused, it is flawed, and it is something that you do not want in your classroom and anywhere near your kids, because it just goes looking for victims, and it goes looking for oppressors, and it's a flawed theory. And apparently, it's all about victims of whiteness, and even the meat you put on your barbecue is now a victim of whiteness. Go figure. <laughs>